So we're very pleased to be able to welcome you, Georgia, uh, to talk about human capital and genes as instruments, which is always very, very exciting. And I think the field has moved on quite a bit. So over to you. Thank you very much. So thank you all for, for being here, despite this being a Friday 13th. So I hope you're not superstitious about this. Uh, yeah, so the paper I'm going to present today is about um, maternal depression, child human capital. We use genes as instrumental variables, basically. And this is joint work with a bunch of people uh, you probably know better than I do. So we don't need introduction in this, uh, in this research center. So uh, let me go. I'm not really going to convince you that uh, what we do is uh, interesting or important, I think. Uh, this is a bit, uh, I'm going to skip the, on the, the motivation and the introduction part and just go to the, the core of the paper and tell you that here we investigate uh, the effect of maternal depression on uh, child human capital. And of course, this relationship is likely to be uh, biased by all sorts of uh, endogeneity channels. We know that uh, it could be emitted variable bias, reverse causality, you, you name it. Uh, so how do we bring in identification in our context? Uh, we uh, use the mother's genes that predict her probability of being depressed as an instrumental variable for maternal depression. And what we do is not really new. It's something that's been done by epidemiologists for quite a while. And uh, the, the, fact, the fact of using uh, uh, genes as instruments is known as Mendelian randomization. Okay, so I'm, I'm sure you all are very familiar with the uh, uh, instrumental variable assumptions, uh, but please bear with me while I go through them and try to, uh, to tell you a bit of a, of a story and how they uh, translate in the context of genetic instrumental variables. So the first thing you might wonder is how do we make sure that we're selecting the right genes? How we're, we're not biologists, we're just economists. So what we do is we rely on the literature in molecular biology, which provides us with this, this awesome genome-wide association studies. These are typically very large studies with huge sample sizes uh, documenting systematic associations between some genetic variants and uh, traits such as education, uh, subjective well-being, uh, uh, depression, and it's, it's a continuously expanding uh, field. And here in particular, the one we use is uh, a GWAS on uh, depression by Patrick Turley and co-authors. So, uh, okay, this is how, so we don't really worry about relevance in our case because we're not the ones to select uh, which genes are relevant for depression. We know this from the, from the literature. So you might be tempted to say that we don't also might not want to worry too much about uh, the second assumption, which is the independence assumption, because genes are thought to be uh, random variables. So, I mean, what genes you, uh, you, you receive is a random draw at conception. So there is no reason why we should think that genes are systematically associated with any confounder of the exposure outcome association. But genes are only conditionally random. Uh, so they're not completely random. They're, they're random conditional on your parents' genotype. So your DNA is a random draw from your parents' DNA. But uh, you know, there's a bit of uh, issues here, which I'm not really going to address at this point. We can talk more about, it, about this uh, in the discussion session. Uh, I'm just gonna say that things such as uh, population ancestry or assortative mating might be playing a role here. And we try to address this uh, in the paper as much as we can. The, the usual suspects, so the big uh, threat to uh, instrumental variables in general and to Mendelian randomization in particular is, of course, the exclusion restriction. Now, uh, not only we worry about the exclusion restriction in the context of genetic instrumental variables, we actually are pretty sure that it's likely to be uh, violated. And this is uh, because of one main uh, uh, suspect, which is called horizontal pleiotropy. Horizontal pleiotropy is a phenomenon that happens uh, when one genetic variant, not only associated with one trait, like depression in our case, but it also have a direct biological link to another trait. It could be, for instance, the mother's education in, in our context. And if this additional trait is also um, likely to affect human capital of the child, we might have a pathway for a, a exclusion restriction to not hold anymore. So this is, uh, let's say, the, the main uh, threat to identification in our context. And uh, while this is common to all um, Mendelian randomization setups, what we have in our case is a more complex setup. We have an additional layer of complexity, which is brought by the fact that we look at two generations here. We're looking at the, uh, the identification comes at the mother level, but then the outcome is a child outcome. 
So what do we know about genetics and inheritance mechanism is that the child is likely going to inherit some of these genetic variants of the mother. So this is potentially another threat to um, identification here. And we know that on average, uh, the correlation between uh, the mother's genetic variants for depression and the child's genetic variant for depression, unless there's any assortative mating going on, should be about uh, 50%. What could happen as well is that the child genes, the, the, the genes that in the child uh, determine and shape their human capital formation might have a common, partly shared etiology with the genes for uh, depression. So the, the genes for human capital and the genes for depression might not just be two separate sets, might partly overlap. And if this is the case, uh, an additional source of, uh, of concern is given by the child's gene for human capital. So we know that this guys here are going to be associated with, uh, with child human capital. What we're not so sure of is whether uh, this, the, 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 gene in, the genes in the child that determine human capital are also going to be associated with the maternal genes for depression. And it's something that you know, might be going on, might be uh, an issue for us. Uh, the child genes do not only present a problem in the sense that they necessarily need, need to, be, uh, to have a direct uh, link to human capital of the child, they could also have an effect uh, through uh, an additional trait of the child, so something like health, uh, you, you, if, you, if you want an example here. Uh, so this uh, relationship could be actually be mediated by other traits. So it, it's a bit, it's even more complex than that. And just to make you even more confused about this slide that you, than you already were, uh, there's a phenomenon called the linkage equilibrium, which basically happens, it just means that genes that are close to each other on the DNA strand they tend to be correlated. So some genes that do not directly uh, predict maternal depression, but are closely located on the DNA strand to the genes for depression might enhance some of these pathways. So it might make things even worse for us. So this is like the complicated situation we have uh, in front of us. And we basically spend the rest of the paper trying to argue that uh, these threats are there, but are not large enough to kill our main results. And this is basically what we do in the, in, in the rest of the paper. Uh, so but let me tell you how we get there. So how do we, uh, what kind of data do we use to explore this uh, relationship? We rely on the Avon Longitudinal Study of Parents and Children. This is ALSPAC. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. It's a court study that recruited around 14,000 pregnant mothers in the early 90s. And it's not representative of the whole UK. It's uh, just around the county of Avon, so around Bristol and Bath. Um, and these uh, children and mothers are still followed up up to this, uh, to this day. And there's actually the second cohort is uh, starting to be um, released. So the children of the children are uh, starting to be um, available for, for analysis, let's say. So what kind of uh, uh, data we take from this survey? Of course, we have genetic information on both mothers and children. This is amazing. It makes uh, the use of this uh, data set particularly um, useful, let's say, in our, in our context. What do we uh, use in terms of variables are is child human capital. So far, I was quite vague on what do I mean by child human capital. Uh, and here I'm you know, referring to the literature in, uh, in education, which takes human capital as a bundle of cognitive and non-cognitive abilities. And for cognitive abilities, we proxy them with um, average test scores at ages 11, 14, and, and 16. These are the key stages two, three, and four, if you're familiar with the educational system in, in the UK. Uh, and these are um, linked administrative data from the National Pupil Database. And for non-cognitive skills, instead, we use the, um, uh, the total score from the Strengths and Difficulties Questionnaire. Again, this is a widely used measure that captures uh, things such as emotional health of the child, uh, social behavior, um, in hyperactivity and in, in attention, and it's, it's five dimensions in total. And, and they're all captured together by a synthetic uh, score. And this is reported by the main carer. This is typically the mother um, at different points in time that we're gonna see. What is our independent variable? This is maternal depression. And uh, how do we measure it in our data? This is self-reported maternal depression, first of all. And we're lucky enough to observe from the birth of the child until the child is about age nine, a full history of maternal depression in the sense that with no gaps, 
uh, the, the mother is, is, is asked uh, whether she had or continued to have depression since the last time she was interviewed. So we have, uh, we're able to, uh, to construct, uh, to, to build a, a pretty consistent history of maternal depression throughout this period uh, with no gaps. And we, um, so our main variable will be coded as episodes of maternal depression. Uh, it's just counting the number of times the mother says uh, she is depressed. We use a, a bunch of different um, definitions of maternal depression in robustness checks. Uh, this is just, you know, the main, uh, uh, the, the roughest, if you want, uh, counting approach, but we try to be a bit more sophisticated in robustness checks. We, we explore a bit farther and we find that it doesn't really matter how we define it. Results are pretty consistent throughout uh, the paper. Let me just uh, walk you through again the identification strategy. So as I said, we're going to uh, use genes as instrumental variable, but how do we do this? Uh, I wasn't really uh, clear about it and I hope to, to, clarify, it, to clarify this here. Uh, we, we use a, in particular, a synthetic measure that captures in a way the genetic risk of being depressed. And uh, this is called the polygenic risk score and it's nothing other than a weighted sum of all the genetic variants that are involved in, uh, in the phenotype of depression. Uh, we, why do we do this? Why do we uh, put everything together? This is mostly to avoid weak instrument problems because each genetic variant that is associated with depression is likely to have a very small effect on uh, the probability of being depressed. So in order to avoid uh, weak instruments, we maximize and say the power of our uh, instrumental variable and we combine it together into a single score. Um, and this is weighted by the um, relative importance of each genetic variant in uh, uh, shaping uh, depression as we, as we observe it. So this is the main uh, regression framework. We have a classic first stage regression and second stage regression here. Uh, YC is the child outcome. So it's going to be either total SDQ or one of the test scores we look at. Uh, DM is maternal depression. We control for a bunch of maternal traits. We try to include them as many things as we can. Uh, you might be concerned about bad controls here. So some of these things we control for are obviously endogenous. So we, uh, we try to check whether our um, results are really sensitive to the introduction of these controls. Uh, but the main reason we include them all together is to avoid, to try to first to capture to a, to a certain extent, the risk of uh, horizontal pleiotropy. So we try to shut down as many channels, as many phenotypes of the mother that might be uh, partly influenced by her genes for depression. We also control for a bunch of child um, characteristics. And lastly, we use uh, uh, some ancestry informative principal components. And this is referred to uh, what I didn't discuss er earlier. So I'm not really going to talk about this even now. Okay, let me walk you through the, the main result of the, ta of, uh, of the paper and the uh, um, I think I'm, I'm going to stop after, after this slide because the rest is all robust as checks. So this is, let's say, the, the main message of the paper, and then we can start discussing about it. Um, and I, I'm happy to, to hear about it from, uh, from you. So uh, what does this, this table show? This is the relationship between maternal depression and uh, in the top panel, we have cognitive skills as proxied by uh, average test scores. And in the bottom panel, we have non-cognitive skills as proxied by total SDQ. We uh, look at different ages of the child and uh, we present both OLS and two stages squares estimates here. So the first thing you, I want, would like you to notice in this table is that no matter the um, estimation method, the outcome we use uh, and the time at, at, at which the outcome is observed, uh, we consistently have that maternal depression reduces child human capital. And the, the magnitude of the effect is of the order of about 20% of a standard deviation for cognitive skills and between 40 to 50% of a standard deviation for non-cognitive skills. We also report the um, uh, coefficient, uh, the first stage coefficient of the instrument, so the mother's polygenic score for depression. And as you can see, it's strongly associated with uh, maternal depression as we would expect. And uh, to show you also a, a bit, of, to give you a hint of uh, the strength of the, uh, of the first stage, we also have uh, the F-stat, which are mostly above 10 um, in almost all cases. 